Are you having difficulties seeing the image that you're composing when taking photos or filming underwater? If that's the case, then I might just have a really useful tool for you today that will make your life as an underwater image maker much, much easier. Today, we'll be looking at WeFind's new WED7 Pro underwater monitor. Coming up. Hey there underwater filmmaking community, it's great to have you back here on the channel. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's review video. In today's video, we will be reviewing the WeFind WED7 Pro Underwater Monitor, a review that I've been really looking forward to making. Now let's get the first things out of the way. Um, WeFind did send me this monitor, I did not buy it with my own money and they asked me to test it out and review it here on my channel. Even though I didn't pay for this monitor, I'm not being paid by WeFind to make this review and WeFind will not see this video before it gets published here on my YouTube channel. So they basically don't really have anything to say what I can and cannot say in this review. So with having this said and out of the way, let's move right into the review of today's product. I'm gonna be structuring this video into three different points. First of all, we're gonna go through the key features of this monitor. Second, I'll let you know what I liked and what I disliked about actually using this monitor underwater. And third and uh, last, I will um, give you my opinion on who I think this monitor is really um, useful to and who will benefit most from using this monitor um, for their underwater image making. So without any further ado, let's dive right into the first topic. The WeFind WED7 Pro Underwater Monitor is a really feature-rich product. Um, so please be patient with me and excuse if I have to look down onto my little cheat sheet every now and then just to make sure that I'm not forgetting any of the cool features that are integrated into this monitor. Well, first and foremost, it is a 7-inch Full HD underwater monitor. And an underwater monitor is basically used so that you get a um, larger and a better view for, of your image that you're taking when filming or taking photos underwater. Um, sometimes the tiny little screens of your cameras, it can be really difficult to judge uh, the, um, let's say, exposure, the composition, focus of your image. So having a larger real estate to work with, like a seven inch screen, um, it's just gonna make your job there a lot easier. Also, you can position the screen in different, different positions really, so that you can look down onto your camera or onto the screen rather than having to have uh, the camera and the screen always in front of you. This can be very useful if you're filming some macro stuff or taking photos of macro stuff, and you can um, basically acquire some angles that you otherwise would probably not really be able to get without using a external monitor on your camera. Um, as I said, it is a full HD monitor. Its um, highest resolution is 1920 by 1200 pixels, which is just a little bit above your normal full HD resolution. And giving you a brightness of 500 nits is probably gonna be sufficient for most situations, even though this is not the brightest monitor that you can find out on the market nowadays. Now the way you connect this monitor to your camera is via HDMI cable. Um, there is special connections that you can feed the cable through your underwater camera housing um, and then plug it into the HDMI port of your camera. 
The cool thing here is that um, in addition to the normal HDMI in that the monitor has, it also has an HDMI out which means that you can, um, you can transfer the image that you're seeing on your monitor um, to a second screen, maybe a surface screen, um, and you have maybe someone up on the surface monitoring the image as well. Obviously, this is not something that is gonna happen on an everyday basis for all of us, but in certain situations, it can be a really useful and helpful tool to be able to transfer your image that you're seeing while you're taking photos or filming underwater up to a person on the surface that can monitor it up there as well. The WED7 Pro is powered by a set of these batteries that we find own batteries and they're rechargeable and we find says that on a full charge of these batteries you can get up to about three and a half hours of battery life which is round about what I found out to be true and a good estimate when I was testing the monitor. The monitor itself is fairly compact um, with dimensions of 189 times 132 times uh, 39 millimeters. Um, and the cool thing here is you don't need an extra housing for the monitor, it's all integrated in one piece. And I find that a really, really cool solution. Last but not least, let's talk about the weight. On land, this monitor weighs just above uh, 1.2 kilograms, and once you submerge it into water, it will come down to a negative um, buoyancy of 280 grams, which is not too bad and can be quite easily compensated by adding some extra flotation onto your underwater camera rig. So enough with the feature talk, let's get into the interesting um, part. How did I enjoy, how did I like using this monitor um, underwater while I was testing it? I took this monitor with me um, on our underwater videography workshop that we had in uh, Bonaire uh, back in May. Uh, and after that, um, I also used it a couple times here in the lakes in Switzerland. Um, so I do have probably about 20 or so dives with the monitor and I would say a fairly good um, feeling of how this monitor really works and um, what it does well and what it doesn't do so good. So first and foremost, I do really like the um, compact design of the WED7 Pro. I think that this is something that's been missing out, of the, out, out on the market. Um, I think that um, oftentimes, or always until now, um, if you wanted to have an external monitor with you on your underwater camera rig, whether that be for photography or videography, um, you would have to get a recorder and, uh, or a monitor, excuse me, a monitor and or recorder and a housing for it. And that tends to get very bulky, heavy, and you know, it's just, it's just complicated because you have another piece of equipment you need to keep dry and so on and so forth. So having a piece that integrates um, a waterproof monitor, and it's by the way waterproof down to 80 meters, which is probably deeper than all of us will go, but it's still good uh, to know that it's um, rated to that depth. Um, having something that integrates all these things in one piece um, is really, really useful and really cool, I think. So that's definitely something that I like. I also like that it's built in what I find a very robust way. It seems like this monitor can actually take a bit of a beating, not that I'm saying you should be throwing it around too much, but if it does get knocked somewhere or, um, or hit with something slightly, um, I think that it will be perfectly fine. Um, the second thing that I like is that it's very easy to operate. All the buttons on the monitor, they are fairly big and you can even use them with dry suit gloves on as I had them on here in the Lake of Zurich when I was testing it here. It works without any issues. The button layout is quite nice. Um, the, the, the difference between or the distance between the buttons is uh, chosen wisely so you can push them quite easily without pushing several buttons at the same time. Um, what I really like is that you have your menu options here so you can go through the entire menu even while being underwater and you can set everything and adjust everything while being underwater which makes this really really versatile to use and you can adjust to a changing situation while you're still underwater. Um, also you do have some customizable buttons here that you can assign certain functions to 
and this personally I find very useful and I ended up using this quite a bit um, for stuff like for example um, a peaking or a false color I can assign that to a certain button and then and then without having to go through the entire menu to find that function I can just press that button and adjust the setting and that function individually and very very quickly a big plus is definitely also the um, long battery life of three and a half hours, which is gonna be more than enough to cover one or two dives that you might be doing throughout the day. If you then plan on doing a third, maybe a fourth dive, um, you can just get a spare set of batteries and then exchange them in between dives and just keep on using the monitor. And I think that is a very smart solution here um, and something that is really beneficial in terms of not having to worry about whether or not you're gonna be running out of battery uh, power while still being underwater. Having such a long battery time also means that even if you're not using all that battery life underwater, you can still use that to review your images and stuff while being on the surface through the um, monitor, on the larger monitor, much rather than on the small tiny screen of your, uh, of your main camera. I already mentioned that you can set everything and change every of the settings while being underwater. I also want to mention here that the a variety of different settings that you can choose on the monitor itself is um, quite intense. There is so many things that you can set um, from, as I said, peaking, false color, um, you have zoom functions or cropping functions, um, you can change ratios, you can do so many things just on the monitor itself. Um, I haven't really gone through all the menu settings and I haven't really uh, tested all of them underwater because there's just too many, but you can actually uh, just tailor make the experience that you get from the monitor by going through the settings and really diving deep into all of these and um, setting them up in a way that you really like. When connecting a camera to a monitor, one of the things that can sometimes be tricky is the lag that you might be getting between the image being shown on the camera monitor and then on the external monitor. Now here with the WED7 Pro, I didn't really notice any um, lag that, is, that was substantial or that was noticeable in any way. So the connection there seemed to be working quite well. So let's move on to the things I did not like quite as much with the WED7 Pro. There's only a few things here, but far not as many as on the positive side, but still there's a few that I wanna mention to you um, here. First and foremost, I think it is a pity that not all frame rates and resolutions are supported on the monitor. Now, um, let me explain. If I film with my GH5S underwater, I normally uh, film in 4K and in 60p. 4K because I wanna have the ability to crop into the image later on in post, and 60p because, uh, especially if I'm filming fast moving action, I wanna be able to slow that down in post production. Now, unfortunately, the um, WeFind monitor does not support 4K 60p. So I have to decide whether I wanna stay at 4K and then drop down the frame rate to 30p, which I can do, or 25 or 24p, but um, sometimes I don't really wanna do that. Or the other option is to drop down the resolution to 1080 full HD and then I can do the 60p. So it's a bit of a compromise which I'm not very happy with because I would actually like to keep filming at uh, 4K with 60 frames per second. Keep in mind that most cameras nowadays, especially the ones that you might want to be pairing up with a monitor like this, they will be able to record in 4K or higher at 60p or higher. Some of these cameras nowadays even record at 4K uh, 120, which again will not be possible to be shown on this monitor. Um, and that kind of limits the abilities of the camera that you're using in the first place. This might not really be a problem for people that are not filming underwater but taking photos because you're not gonna be having your camera set to this mode with 4K 60. You're gonna be having it on photo mode. 
but for someone who's a dedicated underwater filmer, this might really be hmm, a bit of a problem that the monitor will not be able to show you uh, the frame rates and the resolutions or the combinations of those two that you want to um, record your videos in underwater. Now we mentioned before in the features section that the monitor will supply you with 500 nits of brightness, which as I said earlier on, should probably be enough for most situations. I did find though, while filming in the Caribbean in Bonaire Island, that when I'm in very shallow water, a couple of meters only underneath the surface, and it's uh, a sunny day, the uh, bright sunlight is entering the water, that um, it sometimes is not quite bright enough. As I said, in most situations, it's gonna be fine. You're not gonna be, uh, you're not gonna be missing anything, or you're not gonna be wishing for any more brightness. But keep in mind that if you are oftentimes filming or taking photos in very shallow water, this might be a little problem there. And last but not least, I really think that we find should be including some sort of a. Uh, carrying protection pouch uh, with the WeFind monitor. Right now as it chips it only comes in a box and once you take it out there you don't have anything to protect the monitor when you're traveling, when you're taking it to places. So having something small, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just something little that you can place your monitor inside that will keep it safe, that has some padding on it, so you can easily just put it in your checked in luggage when flying somewhere, um, that would actually go a long way in my opinion so we find if you're listening to this uh, this might be a little tip from my side try to include a little pouch into the whole packaging and the whole uh, product setup for the WED7 Pro and there you go those are my pros and cons or my likes and dislikes when it comes to the we find WED7 Pro underwater monitor all in all, I think it is a great product um, and something that can be useful for many underwater image makers. One thing that we haven't mentioned yet that definitely belongs onto the plus side for me is the price. Now normally if you want to add an external monitor onto your setup, your as we said before, you're looking at buying a monitor um, and you're looking at buying a housing for the monitor and that combination normally turns out to be fairly expensive. So you're normally looking at anywhere between two and a half and I don't know, three, three and a half thousand um, US dollars for that combination, depending on what monitor you're obviously getting and what housing. The um, WED7 Pro will only cost you 1500 US dollars, round about there somewhere as it stands right now. And I think that is a very competitive price um, and definitely an argument to consider the WeFine monitor when choosing a new monitor for your underwater camera system. So before we bring this video to an end, let me just quickly give you my opinion on who I think this monitor is really made for and who can benefit most from using such a monitor. Um, if you're a stills photographer and you just want to have more real estate to judge the image that you're taking in regards to composition, um, uh, exposure, focus, all that sort of stuff, as well as being able to take um, photos from different or indifferent angles compared to what you would have been capable of doing before by you know looking down onto the monitor as your camera is pointing into a completely different direction and not having to sort of squeeze behind your camera and trying to get a glimpse of the camera, the tiny camera monitor, then I think the um, WED7 Pro is a um, great tool for you and at its price point that it stands right now, an absolute steal. If on the other hand you are a uh, videographer, a sole underwater videographer, you don't really do any photography or just a tiny little bit of it, um, then I think that the um, WeFind monitor might not be the perfect, the ideal choice for you. Simply because of the limitation that it won't be capable of displaying um, an image that is um, recorded at the uh, highest frame rate or higher frame rate as well as the highest resolution. As we talked about before, shooting in 4K and 60p is not possible or it's possible but it won't be, you won't get an image on your monitor um, using such a setting and that's kind of a bummer for me and something that takes the fun a little bit out of it. Um, so 
Summing it up, for photography, an absolute great monitor. I can recommend it to everyone. For videography, I would be a little careful. It can be okay, it can be used for videography, but you do really need to be um, aware of the limitations that the monitor has in terms of you having to compromise and decide between whether you wanna go with the highest resolution and a lower frame rate or the fastest frame rate and a lower resolution. So there you go, that was my not so quick review of the WeFine WED7 Pro Underwater Monitor. I do hope that you got something out of this video and that it was useful to you whether or not you're in the decision process of um, getting a underwater monitor for your underwater camera system. If you want to see more of that monitor, get more information about the monitor, um, there's going to be a link down in the video description below that will take you to the WeFind page where you can have a proper look at all the specs and everything um, in all the detail there. And other than that, there is not much more for me to say than thank you so much for your time and thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end here. As always, it has been my pleasure. Please do not forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's review and consider subscribing to the channel so you're not missing out on any future equipment reviews and other videos that we'll be posting here regularly. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy capturing your underwater adventures and I will see you next week.